بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد In this lesson we're going to go through المسألة الثانية The second issue And this is the second issue from الباب الثالث The third subchapter which we began reading in previous lessons We already covered المسألة الأولى The first issue which spoke about the prohibition specifically in the state of Ihram We covered that we said that if he commits them willingly, knowingly, without there being any excuse, then he is sinful. طيب. So here, المسألة الثانية, the second uh, issue which we're going to discuss today, is the fidya. If a person commits one of these prohibitions, there is a compensation that he has to offer for committing the mahdhurat, the prohibitions. Fidya to mahdhurat. And these compensations they vary depending on the particular uh, prohibition that one commits. And we will discover that the prohibitions in terms of the compensation that one has to offer, they can be divided into four categories. Four categories. The first of these four categories, and this is the broadest of them, because it includes many, or most actually, of the prohibitions is this one here. بِالنِّسْبَةِ لِحَلْقِ الشَّعْرِ And this relates to shaving the head so if one removes hair from the body or trims his nails or wears fitted clothing or he uses perfume or covers his head in the case of men and ejaculation due to lustful looking and fondling so long as it does not lead to uh, ejaculation because they've divided uh, fondling which leads to ejaculation and fondling which does not lead to ejaculation into two separate categories so here they're speaking about fondling so long as it does not lead to ejaculation they put it here fondling which does lead to ejaculation they put it in another in another uh, category so all of these prohibitions that they've mentioned here what is the fidya what is the compensation for these they say الفدية فيها على التخيير بين أصناف ثلاثة the compensation for these prohibitions is a choice of one of three things. A person has a choice between three things. صيام ثلاثة أيام, fasting three days. Or إطعام ستة مساكين, feeding six poor people. Or ذبح شاء, or slaughtering a sheep. And the evidence for this is the hadith or the statement لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم لكعب بن عجرة, the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to كعب بن عجرة. حين آذاه هوام رأسه When he was irritated by the lice that was on his scalp So Ka'b ibn Ujra, he had an ailment in his scalp Where he had so much lice that it was dropping on top of his head So he came to the Prophet sallallahu in that state And he said to him إحلق رأسك وصم ثلاثة أيام Fast three days أو أطعم ستة مساكين Or feed six poor people أو أنسك شاتن أو سلوتا أي شيب And this hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim So even though shaving the head is a prohibition Ka'b ibn Ujr was instructed to shave his head in this case because of the need He was in need of doing so to treat the ailment that was in his head The lice that was in his head And though he was excused He still had to offer a compensation so we learn from this that if a person, he is in need of any of the prohibitions, then he is allowed to engage in it without there being any sin. However, he has to offer compensation. He has to offer compensation and that there has to be a need. Yeah? So for example, last lesson we mentioned that if a person, he has rubbing between the inner thighs, I said you can use Vaseline as a treatment. If Vaseline doesn't work, then a person is allowed to wear shorts. Remember, fitted clothing is not allowed. But in this case, if there's a need, Vaseline does not work and is going to cause great irritation because of the rubbing of the two legs. The skin is going to peel and so on because there's a lot of walking and it's hot and your legs are going to be sweaty. In this case, you're allowed, because of this excuse, to wear shorts underneath your izar to stop that uh, rubbing. However, even though you're allowed and you're excused in this case to wear shorts, you still have to offer one of these three things. Tayyib. 
Okay. So the hadith here it only mentions shaving the head. It only mentions shaving the head. However, all of the rest of the things that are mentioned here, the scholars included them under this category from the uh, usage of qiyas. They used analogy to include all of the rest of the prohibitions that were mentioned under this category. Because the rest of these things which were mentioned, they only became haram upon a person due to the state of ihram, just like shaving the head. And this can be said about all of the prohibitions. All of the prohibitions fall into this category. This qiyas can be applied to all of the prohibitions. But the other ones have been removed because they have their own compensations. The other ones, like hunting an animal, has not been mentioned because it has its own compensation. Sexual intercourse has not been mentioned because it has, it has its own compensation. So those ones, they were removed even though they enter into the qiyas because they have their own compensations. There's additional evidence to exclude those from entering into this category. So that's why this is the broadest of the four categories that we mentioned. And this one, the scholars refer to it as fidyatul adha. They say, the scholars of fiqh, they refer to this category as fidyatul adha, compensation of ailment. So this is the first category. The first category is fidyatul al-adha. Fidyatul adha includes most of the prohibitions. And if a person commits these prohibitions, then he has a choice of three. Fasting, three days. And these three days, they don't have to be within Mecca. There is no specific time. There is no specific place. And there is no condition to do it consecutively. It doesn't have to be done consecutively. Ita'am sitat masakin is the second option, feeding six poor people. The six poor people, however, here, they have to be within the haram. And each one is given nisf sa'. Nisf sa' is two muds. A mud is one of these. So one is mud, another is a mud. Four of them is a sa'. So half of that is two. Two of these is half a sa' of food, each poor person. Or slaughtering a sheep, and this sheep also has to be offered at the haram, and the person slaughtering them is not allowed to eat any of it. Tayyib. Okay, so we're saying that fidyatul adha is taken from the hadith of Kabir al Ujra, and it includes the rest of the prohibitions outside of shaving the head. They've been linked because all of those are haram because of the state of ihram. They have been made haram because of a person being in the state of ihram. And these, لا تفسد الحج They do not nullify the hajj. So that's the first category. The second category relates to hunting a sayd, a game animal. And we mentioned the condition for sayd is three. The animal has to be a land animal. It has to be one which is edible, halal for person to eat. And it has to be one which is wild, not domestic. Those three conditions which we mentioned previously. That's what Sayyid is. Killing this type of animal in the state of Ihram is not allowed. So if a person does commit to this prohibition, what's the ransom or what's the compensation that he has to offer? The compensation that he has to offer is one of three things. One of three things. فَيُخَيَّرُ قَاتِلُ الصَّيْدِ بَيْنَ ذَبْحِ الْمِثْلِ مِنَ النَّعْمِ The first of the three options is ذَبْحُ الْمِثْلِ مِنَ النَّعْمِ He has to sacrifice an animal from the cattle which is either a sheep, a cow, or a camel. Naam refers to cattle. He has to offer one of these three that's equivalent to the animal that he killed. For example, if a person, he killed an ostrich. The equivalent of an ostrich is slaughtering a camel. If a person killed a zebra, the equivalent of a zebra is a cow. If, for example, a person killed a antelope or a gazelle, its equivalent is a goat, and so on. أو تقويم المثل بمحل التلف The second option is that the animal that was killed has to be valued. It has to be valued. When we say value is the value, the price of that animal, محل التلف, at the location where the killing took place. Because the prices of things, they differ from place to place. So the pricing of that animal which he killed. So if he killed a zebra, how much is a zebra how much a zebra cost 
at that place, that locality, that area where the zebra was killed. If he killed an ostrich, how much does it cost? If he killed a rabbit, how much does it cost? If he killed a deer and so on, whatever animal he killed, how much does it cost at that location where he killed it? After valuing that animal, the price of the animal, he has to um, give in charity the equivalent of that value in food. بِقِيمَتِهِ He buys according to the value that money, he uses the money to buy طَعَامًا To buy food, يُجْزِئُ فِي الْفِطْرَ Which is valid for فطرة زَكَاتُ الفطر. When you give زَكَاتُ الفطر, what do you give? You give food stuff, right? Food that can be stored, such as uh, flour, or tamr, shair, barley, and so on. These type of food stuff which does not rot or decay and so on. Yeah, these type of food stuff. So you buy these type of food stuff according to the value of the animal that you killed. So for example, let's say if someone killed a rabbit, a wild rabbit, and uh, he asks how much is it's worth. And then he is told that the rabbit costs 40 pounds. From the 40 pounds, however much food you can buy, of the food stuff that you would usually buy for Zakat al-Fitr, and then you donate that in charity to the poor people. And the poor people, each person gets nisf sa'a, as we mentioned. Two muds, two of these. You give to each poor person from that. Tayyib. فَيُطْعِمُ كُلَّ مِسْكِينٍ مُدَّ بُرٍ أو نِسْوَ صَعٍ مِنْ غَيْرِ كَتَمْرٍ أو شَعِرٍ أو طيب So here they've mentioned they made a difference between بُر and other than بُر Flower they said for flower you need to give a مُد which is one one of them Other than flower you need to give نِسْف صاع نِسْف صاع is two of them So two مُدز for everything aside from flower If it's flower you give one However this differentiating between مُد and other than مُد there is no evidence yeah we should stick to Nisf Sa'a because this is what came in the hadith of Ka'b ibn Ujra. In the hadith of Ka'b ibn Ujra, in another riwayah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he specifically said to him, give half a Sa'a for every poor person. Nisf Sa'a li kulli miskeen. This lafz can be found in Bukhari. So we should stick to Nisf Sa'a, which is two muds for every poor person. So that's the second option. أو يصوم عن إطعام كل مسكين يوما. For each poor person he fasts a day in his place. طيب. So let's summarize now. For hunting an animal you have three choices. The first choice, the animal that you've killed, it has to be equated to a cattle. It's like مثله من ال من النعم. Who does this? Who is the one that's going to say, okay, this animal that you've killed, this is equivalent to a camel. This is equivalent to a cow. This is equivalent to a a sheep or a goat who does this firstly we refer back to the prophet sallallahu if the prophet sallallahu has done this with any of the animals then we go according to his judgment that's the first thing if the sahaba have judged between an animal and equated it to one of the cattle then we go according to their judgment that's the second the third is if there's no judgment from the prophet sallallahu or any of the sahaba then we refer back to the wa'adil, to religious, upright, experienced, competent people. We refer back to them to judge. Okay, what if a person, he kills an animal which is not equivalent to any of those three things? The camel, it's not equivalent to a cow, it's not equivalent to a sheep. Like for example, if a person kills a sparrow, for example, a small bird. A small bird is not equivalent to a sheep, it's smaller than a sheep. In this case, the person, he does not have this option. He has no option of slaughtering. It's like from the na'am. He has to go back to the other two options that are left. So if there is a mithil, the first option is you slaughter its mithil. You slaughter its equivalent from the cattle. And then this slaughter is given to the poor people of the haram. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So that's the first option. Second option is you value the animal that you killed, you take its value, and then you go and buy food which is equivalent to that amount. And then you do, you donate to the poor people of the haram, nisf sa' for each poor person, from the food stuff that you would normally uh, give as charity for zakat al-fitr. That's the second option. Third option is you take the equivalent 
So, for example, um, if the total amount of the animal that you killed equates to, let's say, 40 pounds, and then you're told that 40 pounds can buy um, 20 sa of food. 20 sa of food, we said half a sa feeds a poor person. So if we have 20 sa, we're going to feed 40 poor people. So 40 poor people is how much you'd have to, how, ma how many poor people you'd, you need to feed. If you're not going to feed for 40 poor people, you, f you, you fast for each poor person one day. So you're going to fast 40 days, and that's the third option. For each poor person, you fast one day. And the evidence for this is the saying of Allah, مَنْ قَتَلَ مِنْكُمْ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاءُ مِثْلُ مَا قَتَلَ مِنَ النَّعَمْ يَحْكُمُ بِهِ ذَوَا عَدْلٍ مِنْكُمْ هَدْيًا بَالِغَ الْكَعْبَةً أو كفارة طعام مساكين أو عدل ذلك صياما. This ayah it begins with يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقتلوا الصيد. Oh you who believe لا تقتلوا الصيد. Do not kill the game, the animal, صيد, the one that meets the three conditions that we mentioned. You're not allowed to kill وأنتم حرم while you're in the state of ihram. ومن قتله منكم and whoever kills it, the game intentionally, فجزاء مثل ما قتل من النعم. Then the penalty is to sacrifice its equivalent from the types of animal that re are referred to as cattle. And naam, the animal that you killed, it's equivalent from this category of animals. يَحْكُمُ بِهِ ذَوَا عَدْلٍ As judged by ذَوَا adl Two just men. Two just men, they will judge and say this animal that you killed is equivalent to a sheep. It's equivalent to this, it's equivalent to this. And that only applies if there is an equivalent. If it's a sparrow or a small bird, then... It doesn't apply, right? That's what we said. Hadian as a hadi is going to be brought as a hadi and offering balig al kaaba, reaching the kaaba, and the sacrifice is going to take place within the sanctuaries of the haram. Aw kafaratun ta'amu masakin, or an expiation where ta'amu masakin you feed poor people, or it's equivalent in fasting. So basically, the three the three stages or three options that we mentioned. Previously, طيب, so this is the second category. The second category is jaza al-sayd, the killing of a game animal while in the city of Iran. That's the kafara. There's an important point that we need to mention regarding hunting, and that is hunting is impermissible for a person while in the state of Iran. Wherever wherever a person is, so long as he is in the state of Iran, it's not permissible for him to hunt. Okay. However, if a person is in the haram then he is not allowed to hunt whatever the case, whether he is in the state of Ihram or outside of the state of Ihram. Just like uprooting the trees and uh, removing the trees of the Haram is not allowed while in the state of Ihram and outside of the state of Ihram, the same with hunting. Hunting the animals of the Haram is impermissible, whether you're a muhrim or not. So a person should not assume that once he's completed uh, his Hajj or Umrah, that he's allowed to go hunting in the Haram. You're not allowed. If you want to hunt, you have to go outside of the Haram, then you can hunt outside but in the state of ihram you're not allowed inside or outside of the haram notice the difference yeah important if you're in the state of ihram you're not allowed to hunt wherever you are if you're not in the state of ihram then it's only in the haram that you're not allowed to hunt while you're in the haram you're not allowed to hunt طيب. so the third category this is specifically uh, related to the compensation for Intercourse. Al wat fil hajj qabla tahal al awal. Intercourse prior to the first stage of at tahalul. Remember, I mentioned there's two stages where a person he comes out of uh, al ihram. There's two stages. So prior to the first stage, if a person has intercourse, wa inzal al mani and he ejaculates bi mubashara due to fondling. Remember, previously they mentioned a mubashara min ghairi inzal, uh, fondling without there being any ejaculation. Here they mention. المباشر بغير إنزال المني. They put that here. And here they said إنزال المني uh, ejaculation due to fondling. أو استمناء. Or a person he takes his um, releases perm intentionally like, through masturbation other than that. أو تقبيل. Or kissing. أو لمس بشهوة. Or through touching uh, lustfully. أو تكرار النظر. Or repeated looking. So this is, they, they made a difference between repeated looking and looking once. Yani. Imna binadratin. Imna binadra is that one looking. Tikrar is looking more than once. 
They say, they've said all of these things for in now you hajj it nullifies the hajj it nullifies the hajj Sheikh Abu Musa mentions a note here he says qultu al inzar bi ghayr wat la yufsidu al hajj inda al jumhur according to the majority of the scholars um ejaculation from uh, means other than intercourse then this does not nullify does not nullify the hajj so if a person does uh, ejaculate while in the state of ihram through any means outside of intercourse then that does not nullify the hajj so we're not saying that it's not haram it is haram to do any of those things while in the state of ihram they are from the prohibitions of ihram doing any of those things lustful looking talking about intercourse uh, kissing fonding all of those things are impermissible but it does not nullify the hajj they're impermissible but it doesn't nullify the hajj what inv invalidates the hajj is intercourse that's what Sheikh Abu Musa is saying, and that's the opinion of most of the scholars. وَرَجَّحَهُ الْعُثَيْمِينَ فِي شَرْحِ الْمُمْتِعِ And this is the opinion which Sheikh Abu Uthaymin, he said, is the strongest. طيب. حَتَّى وَإِنْ كَانَ الْمُجَامِعُ سَاهِيًا أَوْ جَاهِلًا أَوْ مُكْرَهًا They mention another point here, and they say that this nullifies the hajj. Intercourse nullifies the hajj, even if a person, he does so forgetfully or due to ignorance, or he is forced into it. Sheikh Abu Musa also says a correction here, and he says, "Hada غير صحيح." This is incorrect. The fact that they have not made an excuse for a person who in has intercourse due to forgetfulness or ignorance or force, this is incorrect. But ليس عليه شيء لعمومات الأدلة. Rather, there is nothing upon this person. If a person commits any of the mahdurat, any of the prohibitions. Due to any of these three, three, three reasons, then they're excused. If a person does so forgetfully, he wears clothes, he shaves his head, he perps, perfumes himself, he hunts an animal, forgetfully. O jahilan, he does so out of ignorance. O mukran, or he's forced into it, and it includes intercourses or all of these, then he's excused. Tayyib. However, if a person does commit intercourse outside of these three reasons, well, according to what's correct, is that there are several things which are binding upon him. There are several things which are binding upon him. This is why we said that the most severe of the prohibitions is intercourse. This is the most severe of all of the prohibitions of Ihram, having intercourse while in the city of Ihram, because of the outcome. There's five outcomes which the scholars have mentioned. The first one is Tawbah. You have to repent sincerely for transgressing the boundaries that Allah has set. The second one, that you have to slaughter a badana a badana is a camel so you have to offer a sacrifice and that sacrifice is an is a camel according to the fatwa given by some of the sahaba the third outcome is that your hajj is invalid yufsid al hajj intercourse after at tahallul al awwal it invalidates the hajj and though your hajj is invalid the fourth outcome is that you have to complete that hajj وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجِّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ أَزَى اللَّهِ كُمَانِدٍ That you have to complete the hajj and umrah for Allah's sake. You have to complete the hajj. Even though it's null and void, you have to complete it. And the fifth and final one is that you have to qadā al-hajj. You have to perform qadā. You have to re-offer that hajj because it's null and void. طيب. So five outcomes. First one was tawbah. Second one is you have to slaughter a camel. Third one, your hajj is invalid. Fourth one, you have to complete the hajj. And fifthly, you have to re-offer that hajj. Five outcomes. That's why this is the most severe of all of the prohibitions. However, if a person has intercourse after after the first stage, so all of that was before the first stage. If it happens after the first stage, then his hajj is not invalid. It's still valid, although he's sinful. And the compensation in that case, he has to slaughter a sheep. Then they mention the fourth category. Contracting marriages. Contracting marriage, whether it's for oneself or someone else or proposing. All of this falls into this category where there is no compensation. There is no compensation. But what's the outcome? The outcome is that the aqd, the, the marriage contract is null and void. If a person carries out a marriage contract while he is muhrim so either the husband or the wife or the person contracting it is a muhrim in any of those three cases the marriage contract is fasid it's going to be null and void 
وأما بالنسبة لقطع شجر الحرم ونباته الذي لم يزرعه الآدمي فتضمن شجرة صغيرة عرفا بشاه وما فوقها ببقرة Here they're going to mention the fidya for uprooting or removing trees or vegetation in the haram. طيب. So they say as for cutting the trees down which is in the sacred sanctuary shajar al-haram that we mentioned you're not allowed to cut when about to the vegetation so vegetation is other than trees so we have trees and other things which grow like grass and plants and so on which grows naturally other than the ones that are grown by humans the ones that are grown by humans we said this doesn't it, it does it's not included in this they we mentioned that last lesson so the ones the shajar al-haram refers to that which is uh, that which grows in the sanctuary without intervention of humans so what's the what's the daman or what's the fidya for this they said so if it's a small tree you have to slaughter sheep and if it's bigger than a small tree or anything larger than a small tree you have to offer a cow what's considered a small tree and what's considered a big tree this goes back to the customs the urf طيب ويضمن النبات والورق بقيمته لأنه متقوم anything other than trees like plants grass and so on then for them there is a daman biqimatihi you have to value its worth you have to value its worth and then give its worth in charity value it and then buy food and give it to the poor people so this is the vegetation grass and the alwaraq as well the leaves and so on طيب. however what's correct is that this is this there's no there's no daman there's no fidya for cutting down trees except toba person has to offer toba there's no evidence for this that the big tree there's a cow the small trees sheep grass and so on is uh, a you give in charity its equivalents there's no evidence for this طيب. هذا اذا كان مرتكب المحظور متعمدا and this what they've mentioned only applies to the person who falls into the prohibition intentionally as for the jahil and the nasi the one who is ignorant and the one who is forgetful then there's nothing upon him so this applies to all of the mahdhurat except for the person who has intercourse because they mention here sahi and jahil and mukran it doesn't apply طيب. other than that then they are excused but what's correct is that they're excused for all of the prohibitions they're excused for all of the prohibitions if a person commits any of the prohibitions out of jahl because he didn't know that it's a prohibition or he did so forgetfully or he did so because he was coerced or forced into it then there's nothing upon him so in summary we can summarize this chapter the mahdhurat or fidyatul mahdhurat into four categories the first category is where there's no compensation the first category no compensation and this is a person carrying out a marriage contract for himself or other than himself or proposing that's the first type the second type is where there is a major compensation and that's in the case of intercourse there is major conversation you have to offer a camel sacrifice a camel your hajj is invalid and so on the third where there's a penalty for killing an animal and that's a choice of three things which we spoke about then the rest the rest of the mahdhurat which have not been mentioned in category 1 2 and 3 they fall into the final category which is fidyatul adha and there is where you offer one of three things the broadest of the categories i think mentioning like the, in this order is easier so we have one two three and whatever is not one two three falls into the fourth category and that is this subhanakallahumma bihamdik shadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik